now that I'm uh, now that I'm taking on the mantle of the million dollar case study, what words of wisdom would you impart <laughs> to me having uh, gone through this process before? Imagine a blueprint, a step-by-step -step guide, a case study where we peel back the curtains and show you what it takes to sell on Amazon. Welcome to the Million Dollar Case Study. What does it take to sell on Amazon? Well, speed is one thing. If you find an opportunity, you need to move on it quickly. This is true in most aspects of business, but especially on Amazon. A lot of people often find the same product opportunities, but most fail to act quickly. In a lot of cases, whoever gets to market first and builds up a defensible number of reviews quickly, wins. How you doing, Kerry? Doing great. I'm excited to dive into some more product research today. Me too. So tell me, what are we gonna be covering today? Today, we're gonna share some additional strategies on product research using some tools we haven't covered yet. So for those of you that haven't watched the previous episodes yet, we've covered what a good opportunity looks like, as well as used the product database and the extension to uncover ideas and then move those over to the product tracker to verify the sales. If you're following along, you'll have your own list of product ideas you're looking into and the strategies we're gonna share today will help you either add more ideas to that list and also help narrow down some of them. So let's dive in. What would you say to anyone that's thinking about selling on Amazon? I would say have a really thorough game plan in place. Find a way to differentiate yourself from others. Make tweaks to the product in its design so you actually create something that is new. You just start selling something in the beginning just to kind of get used to just the whole process. Like this first product might not make you, it might not be a home run. Know your profit margins going in, make sure your product is profitable, make sure it's, you can find it on Amazon and make sure you can build a brand around it. Just, just be patient, just go through it slowly and just think like if you quit, you're going to be in the same spot in a year, but if you continue to do it, maybe it'll take you three or four months to get it, but you just got to keep pushing at it if that's what you want to do. You know, you need to give them a reason to choose your product over the competitors on Amazon. If you're just going to find a product that's selling well on Amazon, find a supplier, and then just source the product as is, you're really not offering anything new to the table. Creating a new product is much easier than people actually think that it is. You know, because as you're dealing with suppliers, suppliers are more than willing to make changes to a product in order to meet your specific needs. So the most important part just about selling in general, whether it be Amazon or your own site, is having a strong value proposition. Like, why are you selling a product? Are you just going to throw up something that's already out there or are you going to improve upon it and sell something that you can really stand behind? You know, there's a lot of room for, for some new sellers and just keep at it and learn as much as you can. You know, try to learn from one source. Don't hop around a million different YouTube channels or, or blogs and, you know, find one you like and just follow what they're doing. Like John Go. Always work on yourself because whether this business works out or the next business, the number one thing that matters in my mind is working on yourself and investing in yourself. So invest in your education, invest in your mindset, invest in your spirituality, invest in your body and your health, invest in your family and connection and work on yourself and everything will fall into place. All right, so we're over in Jungle Scout again. We're underneath product research, but this time we're inside of Opportunity Finder. So you'll notice it looks fairly similar to Product Database, but it is a little bit different. So whereas the Product Database will help you find individual listings that match your criteria, Opportunity Finder looks at entire niches as a whole. So if you remember, we would type in the keyword into Amazon and then run the extension to analyze the niche. Here you can do all of that within Opportunity Finder. So let's go through a demonstration. To begin with, we're gonna look in the US market again. And I've got some categories already selected here. We're particularly interested in the pet supplies category, but for this demonstration, we're gonna open it up so you can see a variety of different ideas and we can talk through different examples as we go. I've just chosen a few other random uh, categories that I quite like. So now let's go over to the filters and this is where it looks a little bit different. You've now got some sliders here. 
So starting with average monthly units sold, because that's our demand, what would you say we should set that at, Kerry? Well, the product database, I think we use 300. Let's go crazy and just do 500. Okay, we'll go a little bit higher. So again, we'd recommend probably a minimum of 300, but a great thing to do is just to experiment and, and try different sets of filters. Now, if we come over to competition, is there one, uh, is there kind of a bracket that you like to? Usually I look for very low to low, but you yep. know, medium might be interesting to see if we, if we open up, if things low yeah. to medium. Let's do that. So very low to medium. Okay. This one is a little bit simpler, I guess, than product database in terms of like it, it literally tells you what competition level you're looking at. Average monthly price. What do you think? Do we want to go something similar to before? Maybe, yeah, 21's good. At least yeah. $21. Maybe I'll just leave it at the maximum yeah. of 100 plus. Yep. You've got a new filter here called niche score, which essentially is how good is this opportunity out of 10, with 10 being a great opportunity and one being a poor opportunity. Should we keep it fairly open or do you think we should use this filter? I usually leave it open, but what yeah. have you? Maybe we'll come back and we'll just start with these ones. Okay. Another additional filter that you get access to is monthly search volume. So this is how much people are actually searching for that related term on a monthly basis. So I'm gonna leave that as is for now, but we are gonna be talking a little bit more about search volume in this episode. Again, you have the option to include particular keywords if you're trying to narrow it down to something a little bit more specific, mm -hmm. or you can exclude keywords here as well. Maybe a good example of that is at the moment, there's a lot of sort of COVID related items. So if you wanted to exclude things like masks or coronavirus or anything like that, mm -hmm. that would be the place to do so. Maybe one other little note before we perform our search is that if you find a filter set that you like, you can always come up to save filter and you can go, you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it Lenny's faves and save that as a preset. Also keep in mind that you can load filter set and we've actually created some presets here mm -hmm. for you so you don't have to think about it. You can just try out these different ones here to, to get you started. I also like to note that it'll actually save the excluded keywords when you save the filter, so you don't have to type in every mm. single time. Right, that's a really great point. And we may need to enter some of those, but I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna be brave. I'm gonna try it without right, to start with. Yeah. <laughs> I have two sort of products. I know we're supposed to have three, but I have two. <laughs> Were you able to get some, some products? I've got a, a handful of like maybe ideas. Tomato cage, which is something that's very seasonal. Right. Like very, very seasonal. So like mm -hmm. probably not, but it's something that's like yeah. high demand at the moment, but with like pretty low competition. Pop-up hammock with stand. That has a lot of opportunity in it. The only thing is I think it's pretty seasonal. There's a thing called a fire brick. Which a is fire just a, brick? It's just a, a brick. It's literally just a brick. Um, and they seem to sell well, but with like what is it for? You put it in the oven. And then there's also white picnic basket got, it had pretty good numbers. And I looked at picnic basket too. Picnic baskets have quite a bit of demand and it says high competition, but there are like some listings with only like 22 reviews or 33 reviews. And then outdoor seat cushions. I think like cushions themselves would be quite competitive, but if specifically outdoor seat cushions was, well, that seemed to be a, a less competitive keyword. I'd have to kind of like dive into, you know, other variations and so forth. Oh, there's like a snuffle mat thing too. Those are all pretty similar though. Oh, and then like, I came back to like dog pool again. Like, oh, I really like the dog pool. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just the dog cool. product. <laughs> all right, so hitting search. All right, so now here are search results. Again, you can see the total number of results up the top. You've got multiple pages that you can scroll through. You can change how many are displayed on a page. The columns will look fairly similar to before, what we're used to within product database, but each of these will look a little bit different. So let's find an interesting one what to- is lap book? Lap book, let's open up this one. So it's an office product. Now, if you wanna see what it looks like, you can click on this button so we can find out what a lap book is. 
lap book package. Maybe it looks like textbook yeah, something. Yeah, it looks like someone's misspelling laptop. <laughs> yeah, it really does. I'm not sure what this is. Yeah, maybe it's just more of a, yeah, it looks a like textbook a kind yeah. of thing. Interesting, okay. Interesting. Okay. Probably won't go for that then. No, let's close that one down. But initially to explain what you're seeing here, rather than seeing one specific listing, this is kind of giving you information over the whole kind keyword. of keyword of, of lap book. And so these numbers up here are more averages. So for all the top listings underneath lap book, you, this is the average monthly unit sold, the average price, search volume, etc. And then what's really cool within Opportunity Finder is that you get a lot of great historical data. So here you can kind of hover over each month and then you can see you know, how it's trended over time. So this is like super, super helpful, particularly at the moment when we're seeing such a, a lot of increases due to COVID. Uh, a lot of things are selling really well right now, but if you're wondering like, oh, if, if COVID goes away, is it gonna go back down yeah. or not? This can give you insight into how it sold pre-COVID. Yeah. So I find this really, really useful. Well, like for example, like weight, weight dumbbell sets. Mm. I've been seeing those sell out a ton yes. um, because everyone has to work at home right now. But on a usual basis, they're not selling that massively. This one's got a, a different little a trend different here, which is interesting. Yeah, so maybe this is a newer listing or um, maybe they were, something else that could happen is there's some of the best sellers are selling out of their product and all the other sellers that were kind of lower on the search results are moving up. So yeah. you can see they're kind of increasing. Right. So that's another explanation for that. Well, let's take a look at some of this other information that we can see. Let's check out the price. So price see, that's gone the, way up for sure. the number of units has gone down, but it looks like at, around that time where the, the unit sold went down is they've been like jacking up their price because everyone wants these. So that's probably the reason why, because uh, you can see how the price has trended up something kind of crazy, to be honest. And that's really interesting to see. Now we can come over to search volume. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There's a spike. That's kind of right what we're expecting. March when COVID hit. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yep. But it's interesting for anyone that is like looking to jump mm -hmm. on COVID trends. Some of them you might see are going back down again, mm -hmm. like this one where it was really big, but maybe some things are starting to open up or maybe people already I don't know, got their dumbbell sets or whatever but it's not, it might've been a great opportunity temporarily for a little period here, but maybe it's not so much now based off of the search volume. You can also look at seasonality, which is a, another mm -hmm. uh, great metric to check out. This one's really nice because it just tells you at a glance, like overall, how seasonal is it? So it's saying that generally it's like very low, meaning it's, it doesn't, People don't just buy dumbbell sets one time of the year. It looks like it's fairly even all the way through, but it does have a peak month of December. So I guess it's like a good gift mm -hmm. set or... Yeah. 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 Well, people also do New Year's resolutions. Starting in December, they're like, okay, I'm gonna like True. get in shape starting next year. And so yes. maybe they're just ramping up, buying their weights and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. All right, so is there any others here that mm. kind of stand out? There is lots of dog food, so that might be one to exclude. Foldable office chair. Oh, That's cool. That's kind of interesting. Probably because people are working from home and they want to fold up their office chair. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Okay, are these foldable? They that look one's like foldable. That looks like a director's this one. chair. That one is. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, that is a director's chair. Okay, very interesting. This one does not look fold foldable. Hmm. A lot of that, yeah, there's there's some foldable, some that Is aren't. this foldable? Flip up arms? Flip up arms. Not exa exactly foldable. <laughs> I guess that you can shove it under the desk a little bit better. Yeah. So what I would do here, because it's interesting looking at the mixture of items here, there's not heaps and heaps that are foldable. Right. So what I would actually do in this instance is look at the search volume, okay? So this is something that we haven't ah, talked about as much. Yes. So this is an example of a product that previously no one was really interested in, but it looks like it's 
something where, you know, as you hover over, you can see that the number of searches, uh, it has really gone up quite a bit. Whether that trend will stay or not, I don't know, but at the moment, it looks like it's, it's definitely something that people are after. And maybe it's an opportunity to sell something like that at the moment, because it yeah. seems like there's a demand for it. it. It's, I guess it's kind of what you'd call, uh, kind of like a, a new emerging yeah. kind of product or, yeah. or a product that's sort of trending up. So that's how you can start to use this search volume data in addition to kind of the sales numbers and, and so on. I feel like the seasonality may not be as useful because that's mm -hmm. just kind of more so looking at the past, I guess. Um, the search volume is probably yeah, the most sure. interesting thing here just to see that it's trending up basically. Mm -hmm. So I actually find that that one's kind of interesting. It's got a high niche score because I guess, you know, it, it is a big opportunity at the moment. Mm -hmm. Lots of people want it. There's not that many listings that truly are foldable. And a real quick note as we're scrolling through these listings here, you might be wondering what this little box here is. If you have the Jungle Scout extension, it will display all of this really cool information directly on your search page. You don't need to run the extension. It just gives you a really great snapshot of all the most important seller information. So that's a really great perk of the extension. So if you haven't got that, make sure that you check that one out. Cause yeah, straight away I can see whether the buy box is owned by, um, you know, FBM or FBA, how many sellers, monthly sales, all that kind of thing. Now that I'm uh, now that I'm taking on the mantle of the million dollar case study, what words of wisdom would you impart <laughs> to me having uh, gone through this process before? One of the most rewarding things about it is um, is the possibilities. Like what what is possible? Uh, Greg had a goal uh, to hit one million in revenue, and we've done that. And, I, and it goes back to this idea of goal setting. So I think that like having clear goals, what's going to be the outcome uh, overall of this product? What revenue do I want to hit? You know, what is the contribution going to be to Pencils of Promise? Because that's what this whole mission is for, is to provide um, opportunities to, you know, students that probably don't have access to education, backtrack into it and say, okay, so I have this goal. And so now I need to, in order to do that, I need to do X, Y, and Z. And that's a good starting point, but I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure you're, you've always been a goal setter. So I'm sure this is, this isn't going to be a problem for you. No, not at all. <laughs> oh, I hope not. <laughs> all right. So we've got these, the key word was ditch bag, but it looks ditch more bag. like dry bags is yeah. what, what people are looking I wonder if ditch for. bag is like a brand name yeah i'm not sure i didn't see it on here so but maybe outside bag. of amazon right so sometimes what you'll find with product research is that you kind of go off on tangents yes. a little bit so i'm not seeing ditch bag too much but now i'm super curious just to type in like dry bag yeah that's exactly what these are right what if you run the extension so let's yeah Good idea. I think these are probably competitive just because I did see them at the Canton Fair. It's been a year and a half ago. Right. And they were really like the new product that, I were see. Be that was being featured at the fair. So yeah. So yeah, high demand, sense. high competition, yeah. mm -hmm. thousands of reviews. Mm -hmm. Some of them are quite a cheap Super price cheap. point. So probably not the greatest thing, but it's nope. yeah, kind of interesting to check out. So let's keep moving forward. And essentially this is just kind of the process is picking out opportunities or keywords that look interesting, checking out the historical data, checking it out on Amazon, just kind of running those questions again that we talked about in the first episode. Let's check out the float bags. Float bags. Yes. What is a float bag? I think it's when you swim across a lake or something. It's so that you don't drown if you get a cramp or something. Gotcha. Okay. Float bag set. Yeah, I don't necessarily like seeing a lot of mixed items. Yeah, if you gr scroll up to the what the float bags actually are, like this thing, this is a swim safety float bag. Float and dry bag, waterproof dry, dry bag. Okay, so in instances like this, what you're trying to figure out is What's what use? <laughs> yeah or like what is uh what are people actually searching for to find this product 
And so this is where we're gonna show you another tool within Jungle Scout called Keyword Scout. I'm gonna come over to Keyword Scout under Keywords, and you can run what's called a reverse ASIN mm -hmm. search. So I'll show cool an thing example. Is you can find it right there. That is great. Which one do you think we should do? I like this one. This one looks pretty like what I would think a float bag was. Okay. So what we wanna do is we wanna copy the ASIN, and yep, if you've got the extension, you can do it right yep. here. That's actually super handy. And we're gonna run a reverse ASIN search to see what keywords people are typing in in order to find this product. Because we're looking at the title to try to figure out, like, what are people typing in? Float bag, float and dry bag, mm, we're not quite sure. Yeah. But if we do a reverse ASIN search, we're gonna find out exactly what people are searching for. So, running this in Keyword Scout. All right, so now let's take a look. So it looks like the number one keyword for them is swim buoy. Swim buoy. I say swim buoy is, is, is- Swim buoy. Okay, maybe it's an Australian thing, I don't know. Okay, swim buoy, <laughs> <laughs> as you call it. Let's see what that, uh, I wonder what the- So now, yeah, we can run this, uh, or we can open this up on Amazon. Actually, I'm gonna take a quick look at the search volume. Looks like it's pretty steady. However, obviously yeah. the summer months more. Yeah, definitely. Okay, interesting. Let's go over to Amazon. Now we yeah, can see- Yeah, that's what I was thinking it more, more of what a float bag is. Right. Yeah, this makes a lot more sense. So now we could run this here. All right, so we're seeing, okay, a four opportunity score, high demand, high competition. If we dive into that a little bit more, the the reviews aren't actually too bad. There might no. be some, some down here that are dragging that up to high competition, but when I dive in, it's not, not too, too bad. bad. If we come over to the sales, the, the monthly sales are like pretty good. We're definitely over yeah. 3,000 uh, per month. Uh, I was out of all, sorry, per day out of all of these. What is the um, sales history for the top one? All right. Looks like spike for the summer, obviously. Yeah. So it looks like it really is a seasonal summer product. Yeah, you can definitely see that here that in the other months, it's very, very low, high for the seasonal. And we could kind of verify mm -hmm. that by looking at a couple more. This one doesn't get as many sales, but you can kind of see again, summer months, yep. it goes up. This summer has been crazy, but still very seasonal. Yep. Okay. And then this is another one. Check one more. So just by looking at, you know, three different listings here, we're confirming the same kind of trend. Yep, summertime. And so for us personally, we're not too interested in mm -hmm. a seasonal product. Keep in mind, if you do consider seasonal products, a lot of the times they'll appear as good opportunities throughout the season. So it's kind of like if you are gonna sell seasonal products, you need to detect the trend uh, like a, a couple of months beforehand so you can get it in for the season. Whereas or you just do the research the year before. If you wanna eventually sell mm. seasonal products like this Christmas maybe, start looking at what products are selling that are need to be less competition and just and go for those. Yeah. Exactly. I did find something the other day though that was like mosquito or a fly catcher device, but it, the only thing is that you can't differentiate that one. It just is what it is and it's like they're all selling the same. With, you know, things like dog wools, we can differentiate it. And then like, what's your overall feeling? Do you like some of the possibilities that you've looked at or do you still kind of lean more towards I really wanted to find something else smaller. I found a lot of oversized products in there, like uh, the pool stuff and there were, um, you know, even the picnic, but all that stuff's oversized. So the, I think the thing I like about the dog bowl situation is it's still pretty small. I, I think it would be easier to stay on the like more compact side of products. So I, I had a hard time finding smaller products. Yeah. I mean, I do like the simplicity of a dog bowl as well. I mean, it's... Yeah you can't really mess it up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the stainless steel dog bowls that are out there, they're not differentiated at all, except for the Yeti. Oh yeah, the stainless steel ones are boring. Yeah, they're all very boring. I mean, ours would be definitely differentiated. If I pull the extension there, it's still, so, I mean, it says, it is pretty competitive. Yeah, that's the only kind of 
drawback, but it would be, yeah, it would be fun to, to try. All right, so let's come back to Opportunity Finder. We're just gonna keep going through some results here. Side curtain rod, taser pattern, wooden letter board. Mm, yeah, this is probably really competitive. You would think so, yeah. I mean, every girl on Instagram has one of these. Right. Yeah, we were using one of these to uh, take Albus's oh, yeah weekly his. photos <laughs> as he was like 10 weeks old, 11 weeks old. These are super cute, but I think they would be very competitive. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right, let's keep we don't moving even have to forward. Look, yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go next through page. to the next page. D&D &D blanket. D&D &D blanket. Interesting. <laughs> well, we probably won't do that one. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. <laughs> Is, but would that be kind of like a license type thing? I don't or? think Dungeons and Dragons is like, I think it's right. like a thing people do. I don't know that it's a trademark. Okay. But I could be wrong. Dave, if you're watching, you got to be, you should be selling <laughs> these. <laughs> Maybe he is, I don't know. <laughs> Desk dividers for the office. I would have thought that's probably quite competitive. Oh, big desk dividers. Mm, yeah, social distancing. Ah, okay. There was probably like a little period where that would have been a good opportunity, maybe. I'd say that it's... But people are going back to work in some industries. Yeah, interesting. high price product, so yeah, really great price point. Probably take a little bit more capital to get mm -hmm. started with it. It's an eight opportunity score. I very rarely have seen like an eight, mm -hmm. so that's kind of interesting. Not that many reviews. Downsides, downside would be it's an it would be an oversized product, heavier. And some of those the sales aren't just well spread out in the in the monthly sales. Right. Looks like is this a actually one? It's a glass one. It's a glass whiteboard desktop. Mm, maybe I feel like maybe that's slightly different. Yeah, it Guard is. for desk. That's a divider, clamp-on divider. That's kind of, it's interesting. So far, these are all the same product. A clamp-on divider might be interesting because they can move it around, right? Yeah. So this one looks pretty interesting. I think it'd be worth running a reverse ASIN search on the one that we like the most. Mm -hmm. Was it, did you like this clear one here? Yeah, I like here? that one, yeah. So let's copy the ASIN here. And let's run a reverse ASIN search. I'm really interested to see what sort of things people are searching for. Because we it seems like it's a, a new trend. Yep. And I feel like this could give us some interesting information. All right. So, okay. Not desk dividers. But the biggest keyword here that people are searching for is privacy shields for student desks. Mm -hmm. 15,000 searches. Much higher from than all the others. Then you've got like work from home accessories, work from home, but that's not really Desk like a, a product. Desk dividers for students. That's interesting. Glass dry erase board. Interesting. I kind of feel like they, there's potentially a number of options here because obviously there's a huge yeah. demand now for like work from home stuff. So let's maybe look at the top one, privacy shields for student desks. Interesting. So now we're starting to look at something a little bit different to the other dividers. When I was a teacher, those were for uh, tests so that kids wouldn't cheat. Right. Okay. Well, now they're to stop people sneezing getting and getting a virus. So I would want one that you could wipe down. Okay. So it looks like so far a lot of these are kind of like packs of cardboard ones. This one looks interesting. Right? This one here is premium plastic. Pack of 20 for $45. Let's just keep going down and just see what they are. Um, a lot of them, that's only got three and a half stars out of five. A lot of cardboard ones. Um, so yeah, you could definitely, maybe that's a good way to improve it is to make it hard plastic. Yeah. Let's maybe run the extension here. Kind of look at this as a whole opportunity. Okay. Oh wow, we've got a seven opportunity score. Pretty good. Low reviews. Very low reviews. High demand, low uh, competition. That's exactly what you want. Definitely low reviews. The highest is 320. Let's take a look at that. It's a really cheap pack of privacy boards. You 
Oh, you only get four boards. I think some of the other ones that are higher priced have like 20 or whatever. That's really way too overpriced. So we would have to make it a higher price. Yeah. Well, it looks like lots of these other listings, mm -hmm. you know, the average price is still $43. $43. So if there's only one listing that's really low priced, I think you should be okay. Because let's look at the distribution of sales. There's still a really good distribution. Mm -hmm. Like other listings are getting, some of these aren't getting as many, but up here they're getting like up to 1,000, 2,000, 500. So I think it's like reasonably well distributed. It looks like it's kind of an emerging product. So I think now could be potentially a good time to, to get in, but we'll, we'll dig into it a little bit more. But so far that's looking really good. Ticks off on price, mm -hmm. looks like good demand, low competition. So next steps from here, let's add these to the product tracker like we did before. We found an opportunity that we quite like. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna add all of these top listings to the product tracker. So now, when you're in this stage where you found a few good opportunities, you've added them to the product tracker, what do you do next? The next thing that we'd recommend you do is to do a bit of a profit calculation starting to figure out like, how much could I roughly source this for? How much are the Amazon FBA fees? And, and to start getting an idea of what is the profitability like? Because if you've got four or five items that seem okay, profitability is probably one of the main things to help you decide one over another. Well, I'm gonna go to Alibaba and I'm gonna search for plastic privacy shield for classroom. Yeah, see what that brings back, or maybe even just keep it broad if... Okay, so this is a foldable kind of plexiglass one. Okay. These are face shields. Right. Definitely not what we're looking for. Maybe take off the full classroom and just go like plastic privacy shield, maybe, and see if that brings back more results. Mm, those are face things. <laughs> um, Your face privacy. Plastic. Privacy shield for desk. Yeah. Okay, that's better. School plastic barrier shield. Folding plexiglass. This looks like it would fall over. Yeah. Like all of these I could see just, just remembering my teaching days, just flopping over. Like something would need to clamp down. Student stand desk. There's a couple here now that. Let's take a look at this one. Interesting. Oh, this one's got a video. That's pretty neat. It's pretty big. Pretty heavy. Can you imagine that falling on a kid's head? <laughs> I'm trying not to. <laughs> I know, like that's just what I'm imagining. Okay, so while you're looking at that, let's try to find some more information on these. Like, like that I'll one look at some. particular one that we saw that was a pack of 20, that's probably. Yeah. That one. So let's take a look at that. Maybe we can get some more insight from this particular listing. Like maybe you could find a similar looking product. It looks like this one just stands up. It, it looks like it's reasonably lightweight. Like it doesn't look heavy like the ones you're looking at. It has only got four and five stars. Mind you, it's only 13 ratings. So there's not heaps there, but of those, it looks like they've got good reviews. These are the images. I'm gonna come back to Keyword Scout and I'll actually look up Plastic Privacy Shield because I, I think it could be a good option to make it more premium and durable. So very low search volume for Plastic Privacy Shield, but maybe I'll just type in Privacy Shield and see, see if there's anything related to that. Like or for classroom, yeah. Uh, is that what is that what we were searching for? Or oh, for students? Maybe it's yeah. like for students. Classroom's fine too. Okay, so student for student desk. desks, desk dividers for students. So really thinking it through, people are just looking for privacy shields for student desks. They're not actually searching for like plastic ones. Right. It's more so do we think like that that would make them more likely to click on our listing because it's plastic mm -hmm. versus some of these others. Maybe we need to like see if there's any insight from any of these that we can get. 
I'm going to just like take a look through these listings. See this one here, three and a half stars, 88 reviews. That That's a pretty low rating. Maybe this could give us some insight. It's just cardboard. Yeah. So 18% one star. That's pretty poor. Let's take a look at this. The worst dividers I could possibly have bought, cheap product, fell apart, just no, and do not buy cheap and flimsy. Okay, so we definitely need to make them strong, durable. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm back in Keyword Scout. I'm interested in exploring some more of these keywords. So if we try Privacy Shield for Desk, that seems to be what it is. We'll see how much search volume is for that. That's low, but Privacy Shields for Student Desks, okay. That sounds about Sneeze guard right. Sneeze for desk is what I would try to search. Sneeze guard. Okay, let's try that. Oops. Sneeze guard for desk. For desk. Let's see what that brings up. Looks like there's a lot of really good related ideas mm -hmm. here. Uh, that's got 10,000. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. And then some of the other ones here, plastic shield, plexiglass, sneeze guard for counter. Interesting. So let's look at the ones for desks. So it looks like, again, it's for classrooms or uh, a variety of uses. So, okay, these ones are all, all these sneeze guards are plastic. So you were trying to search for the original cardboard ones, yeah. but you found a lot of the plastic ones. Real quick, I'll run the extension here. We'll just see if we think this is a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm getting the impression that it will be. Okay, so this one is a seven, high demand, low competition. Let's see, uh, very oh, low reviews. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's one with 300. That is a sneeze guard. So there's one listing that's got a lot. They've got a lot of sales, but it looks like all these other ones with low reviews are also getting quite a lot of sales. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this seems like a good one. Mm -hmm. These are all the plastic shields. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's do a profit calculation to gauge whether or not this is gonna be profitable. So let's take a look at some of these on Alibaba. So we've got this one. All right, so $6.50 to $14.50, that's quite a big range. It'd be nice to kind of like narrow down the price a little bit more. Mm -hmm. This one's All a little, right. I think you need to like bolt it down. Okay. Which might be a good thing, but I don't know how you do that. Okay, well, you might be able to get it without those like little a clamp, bolt things. A clamp would be good if it's clamps. Yeah. But I don't know how that would work. Okay, let's go to the next one. I like this one because it gives us what looks to me to be more accurate pricing at the mm -hmm. top because they've got it like one to 500, 500 to 1,000. So that pricing looks pretty good to me. So it's saying 655 for under 500 then $6.35. So keep in mind at this stage, we're not going right into sourcing. We're just trying to get an idea of like a ballpark idea of how much this product could cost. So keeping, in, keeping this in mind, this is the product that we want to make. So what we're going to do, we're going to select one of these listings. This looks like a, a single shield. And what you can do is come over to this net amount, click on this one. That actually brings up the FBA profit calculator. So now what we can do is we can enter in the product price. We can enter in our product cost and get an idea of, of how much profit we could potentially make. So if we were selling ours at $90 and that was like $6.55. We need some shipping in there, so and it's oversized, so. Yeah, so we could start to be generous. So it's like $6.55 for the product, like, then. Say $10 even. Even at $10. So if we put in $10, we can now see that we would get $55 profit if we were selling at $90. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge profit margin. But yeah, so I'd notice that there are also some other single ones mm -hmm. that were like a lot cheaper, so like $40. Mm -hmm. So let's try that. Let's hit calculate. And even if we're selling at $40, getting $12 profit. Pretty good. Over 100% ROI. That's pretty good. That seems like a really reasonably reliable price. I think we've got a good buffer there for shipping. Mm -hmm. So, so far, just off of that really basic profitability calculation, I feel like this could be a, a good opportunity. Mm -hmm. So we've done a basic profit test. We've added it to the product tracker so that we can verify the sales. 
All right, so at this point, Kerry and I have done between 10 to 20 hours of product research, both together and separately, aside from the time that we've been here with you guys. And from that, we've now got a pretty solid short list of products, like the Aquarium Pebbles, the Snuffle Mat, the Sneeze Guard, and so on. As you can see, it doesn't just happen in 10 minutes, it does take a lot of time and effort. And keep in mind that both of us have done this before, so we may be a little bit quicker at eliminating items or having a, a sense for what could be a good opportunity or not, which means that it may take a little bit longer for you. If you're following along, we'd encourage you to try Opportunity Finder as well as Keyword Scout if you haven't already. Also, with your top products, make sure to do some basic profit calculations just like we did today. Remember, we're not getting bogged down with needing precise numbers at this point. You just want to get a quick ballpark estimate. Now, if you're watching and you want to start your own Amazon business, then I encourage you to join the Million Dollar Case Study Challenge. The first steps are joining our private Facebook group. Each week, you'll receive action items so that you can follow along and be building your own business. The link is in the description. Now, some parting thoughts as we wrap up product research. We've shared a lot of product research rules of thumb, but I prefer to see them as guidelines. They're not hard and fast, and sometimes you break them. The sneeze glass, for instance. We've said to avoid seasonal or fad type items. Of course, the sneeze glass very much falls into that category. So why do we continue to explore it? Well, this is where risk versus reward comes in. You rarely hit all of the major criteria that we've outlined, so you will usually need to pick what's most important to you. So in this instance, Kerry and I were taken by how incredibly huge the demand was for this product and the lack of competition, also the potentially high profit margins. So we felt that the reward was significantly higher than the potential risk of it being a fad type item. Therefore, we explored it more. Now, if it didn't have such high potential, then we would have ruled it out due to the uncertainty of it being a fad item that maybe wouldn't last. So always be thinking about that. It's this kind of balancing game of all this criteria, and hopefully this thinking helps you. So always be considering risk versus reward. In the next episode of the Million Dollar Case Study, Kerry and I share our best practices on finding suppliers. We also narrow in on our new pet product and finally order some samples. Tune in to find out what we ordered. We'll see you then. Push-ups or something? <laughs> So I think these desks. <clears throat> so I think these desks. <laughs> Why can't I speak? <laughs> it's long day. Yeah, I'm, it's hitting me. <clears throat>